So I'm gonna out myself as the biggest liar on YouTube. I don't think that I can do the 24 hour project. Well, that's what we're gonna be working on, but not in 24 hours because... Long story short, I moved into my parents' dining room and the rest is what it is. One day I'll deal with it. Today's not the day. Today we make cosplay. I wanted to present to you guys the project that we'll be working on. Well, I mean, if you've read the title, you already know. This is Ikin Pasta's Miracle Cosplay Pattern and that'll be our mini project. I've been collecting material and fabric, everything for this cosplay for a really long time now and I really, really wanted to make it like two years ago or something already. No, it wasn't out yet. Was it out yet? I'm not even sure. If you follow my work, you probably know that in the past I've struggled a lot trying to make a bodysuit. It was for a costume that I haven't even yet to finish because yeah, the struggle was real. <laughs> So instead of keeping on the struggle, I decided to treat myself to a pattern from Kinpatsu. I have never worked with a pattern before, so this will be super interesting. I usually just tape my body, which I might have to do for this project too actually, because I don't think that all her pieces are gonna fit me exactly, and I'll probably have to alter a lot because I don't think we have the same body shape either. But It'll still be fun. This video is not sponsored by Kinpasu Cosplay, but if you want the pattern for yourself, you can always visit their website. And I know that recently they moved to Canada, so if they ever see this, welcome to Canada! I just came into this room because the lighting is cool. I'm gonna go back to my other room now and we're gonna tape this up and get started! So join me as we complete this project in however many days and however many vlogs I decide to cut it into. So I want to present to you today's working sheet. This is Coco or Mimi or Ruru. <laughs> this is Mirko. So on the side here, I have the list of steps that I have to do. I always like to visualize myself working on it before I actually work on it. But when I get there, I'm not as anxious. This is all the pieces that she will be needing. And up here are all the stuff that I wanted to alter. I wanted her armpit holes to be a tiny bit larger, her tail to be a tiny bit bigger, the neck piece a tiny bit fluffier. Uh, hand patterns, uh, instead of printing hers, I'm just gonna trace my own hand and maybe still use her armband though. And for the leg pattern, same thing, I'm probably just gonna take my own leg just to make sure that it fits. So you can see that I settled pretty well into my parents' dining room. And look at my new tiny ring light! Maybe it'll help me to film more at night. But yeah, some of you might be wondering why I am corseting. Toki, you're so skinny already. Toki, you're already so thin. Toki, why do you want to wear a corset? Listen here, okay you? Thin girls can want curves too. And because why not? Before people wore bras, they wore corsets anyway. So, you know, with the theme of quarantine and the plague, let's all travel back in time. Okay, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'll probably blah blah a little bit more about corseting as the video goes through anyway. So, next step. After assembling the printed pattern, we have to cut them up so that we can trace it onto the fabric and the foam. For the next part, I'm gonna need this because it's full of little pieces and you don't want to lose that. Working with patterns is one thing, but working with pre-made cosplay patterns is one hell of a luxury. And it is a very foreign luxury to me. So we all get to experience that together. Oops. Next up, we trace one hand to make the pattern for the glove. Don't forget to add the seam allowance and make it slightly larger around the wrist so that your whole hand can actually fit through the glove. We then cut it out and move on to the cuff. Because we changed the size of the glove, we need to adjust the size of the cuffs too so that they can still match. I tried shrinking the pattern at first, but that wasn't enough to fit around my wrist. So I decided to cut darts into the pattern to shrink it even more. So I hope you all like green because this is the new setup that I came up with. For this project, we'll need a lot of stretchy fabric. I was saving this white fabric for another project, but we'll start with this one. The purple fabric is left over from my Coven Lissandra cosplay, and which cosplayer doesn't have a stash of gold in their collection? I mean, all characters just seem to love that gold trim. Finally, you'll need a lot of fur. Here, I'm just enlarging the armpit hole like I said I would. I'm just making sure that all the pieces involved are modified accordingly. 
And finally, we get to the part where we trace all of our patterns onto the fabric before we cut them. I might or not have forgotten about seam allowances, so don't mind that messy top corner right there. After tracing all the white patterns out, you need to cut them all out too, and repeat the same thing for the purple parts. It is now time to assemble all the pieces, left to right, right to left, up to down, and yeah. I wish we could have continued with these cool transitions, but I had to stop right here to explain to you guys that I carved out a little bit of the neck in the back. My zippers weren't long enough, so this was my way to compensate for the length. Next up is hand time! Halfway through cutting the hand patterns, I forgot that we could just go ahead and pin two sheets of fabric together, trace our pattern, sew it, and then cut. So I stopped halfway, we're just gonna pin it here, and then we're gonna cut after. Maybe if these scissors were able to cut any better, I might have been able to pull it off in 24 hours. Who am I kidding? I don't know what madness took over me for me to be that ambitious, but it's good to dream sometimes, I guess. So next you'll need a sharp tool to flip around your wrist cuff. Just a reminder, this is gonna cover the foam. The, oh, the sharp object is just to make sure that your points are really pointy. Because sometimes it's really hard to have sharp points when you sew. So it'll usually end up like this. And then you push it up and then you have your cute point. But really the secret to it is trimming the edges real close. Before cutting the glove out, you can check the fit directly. Here I have a few loose finger tips, so I'll probably have to fix that. But for the most part, it pretty much fits. Again, you'll want to trim the pattern as close to the seam as possible to maximize the range of motion and minimize the bulkiness. Eventually, you'll want to turn the glove inside out. And for this, you have two options, using a sharp object and trying to dig everything out and struggle a lot. Or you could use the flappy flap technique, quite fail-proof if you ask me. Not bad at all. We're in my living room right now because there's good lighting! <laughs> for the zipper, we're going to do ye old pre-sewing technique. Cleanse it the zipper. We're gonna hand sew it together very loosely. And we're going to attach it to the other spine. That's basically where the zipper is gonna be. And we'll just pin that real fast. You know, I don't know when I started using this pinch and pull technique, but it has yet to fail me. So we're just gonna sew along the line here by hand really loosely and then put in the zipper and sew that down by machine and then open back the seams that we sewed in by hand. For this, I'm just gonna use some scrap colorful thread. The more colorful the thread, the easier we'll see it to remove it. If you can adjust the stitch length on your own machine, then you don't need to do this by hand. Just make them wider so that they're easier to take off after. If we can salvage this thread after, then that would be optimal not to waste thread. Otherwise, then it'll have served a purpose anyways. Now that you've sewn the other side, you can see this is how it looks like. I just want like a temporary bond just to mark where the center is basically. Behind the seam, you're gonna want to align the center of the zipper to it. You want to pin that in place and then go and sew along the two sides of the zipper so that when you open this, it'll be magically aligned for you. So I know that there's a lot of misconceptions about corset wearing, mainly that it is restricting or constricting. And you probably saw throughout the whole video that I did pretty much everything in any position and it didn't change anything to my life. 
anyways you should definitely look into it if it's something that's interesting to you or you know whether you're a guy or girl there's a lot of great resources on youtube and yeah i mean it's just a bit of fun in my day <laughs> It makes me feel cute whenever I'm wearing it. It's mostly a fashion statement. I mean, look at this. I'm not showing off to anybody, but you know, maybe my style will change after the quarantine. I think I wore it once to the grocery store and I felt so badass. But yeah, it's just a corset. I don't have a zipper foot, but I will still try my best. Not like I haven't done this before. What could possibly go wrong? I think we'll just have to trust the process. I'm just scared that the seam allowance that I folded under is too short and it's not sewing into it. And I think that's what the zipper foot is for. It lets you sew closer to the zipper, but you don't miss uh, that seam allowance. Maybe there's a way I can check. Oh no, I can't because it's closed. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out together after we open the red seams. And in fact, you'll find that I did fail, but keep calm and move along. I salvaged the red thread and just redid everything that I explained earlier basically. But this time I left myself a bit more seam allowance to work with. Real moment of truth. <laughs> Not to bed. Oh, what do we have to do next? I have been dreading this part because I knew it would be complicated. But when in doubt, you just have to remember that you need the two correct faces to face each other. So this line first and then, you know, maneuver it somehow so that the rest connects. So let's do that! Piece by piece, we will get through this. So I tacked one piece down and we're slowly gonna work our way all around. So I just got halfway through it and I can tell you that I am sweating so I'm just taking all the time that I need on it because this is not something that I want to redo. If it can help you though, uh, there's two things that you really need to pay attention to and that's the edges, so the points, and the curve. So anytime there's a curve, you kind of want to just cut a few slits in it, even ever so small, just to help it conform to the other piece that you're trying to attach it to. And I always start by straight up pinning the points to align them to the other point that I need to attach it to. So yeah! This is as good as it gets for now and there's a few tight spots but I'm okay with this. If you guys stare at the pattern for long enough, you'll probably know what this curve is and it will probably need a lot of adjustments to fit to me. If you have motion sickness, look away because this part might make you nauseous but basically I attach the sleeves and the hips. All that's left is to try it on. So we're just gonna try it on inside out so that it's easier to mark where the adjustment needs to be made. And I'm just gonna slip it right on and hope that it fits. And right now, you can't really see it, but it's tight around my butt. It went through. Oh, the part that I think will need most adjustment is my chest part. Oh, you know what? It's not that bad. Oh, magic. Well, the knee to, oh, okay, okay. Okay, this barely covers my butt. You know what? It is not horrible. I think it kind of already fits. But I have no butt. My badonka donk is uh, tiny, so. Uh... So I need to fix the rear area, but for the most part, it's quite good. So we're gonna have to wrap up the video soon, and I just wanted to end it with whoever actually got me a Christmas gift for Christmas. I did not open it yet, I am so sorry. I know I still owe you a Christmas gift back. If it makes you feel any better, I actually didn't send out any of the gifts for any of my friends and family either, so I am just super late. But thank you so much for the gift, and we're gonna open it up together. Alright. Oh my god, you guys actually don't have to be this fancy. Do they force you to wrap it in a gift bag for me? This is so extra, but thank you so much. Oh my god, there's two packs. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Oh, it's from Fonzie. You, sir, are always super generous, and I know that it's not just with me. So thank you from the bottom of everybody's heart. What is... Oh. <laughs> 
All right, so these are from my Amazon wish list, and I didn't think somebody would actually buy it for me. <laughs> In the description, I remember writing, I don't have a dog, but I need this for my next cosplay. <laughs> and it's dog clippers. Oh, this is very useful, thank you. Okay. Yay. Oh, these are dance tights. So apparently a lot of cosplayers use these to attach their socks to so that they don't slide down. It's like an illusion that it's floating there. <laughs> I really wanted to try that trick out and we're gonna get the chance to thanks to Fonzie for sponsoring these. I will definitely be using these in the next vlog. So come back soon to see how I put them to use. To all who are watching this new New Year's, Happy New Year's! Thanks for tuning in again and as always, see you next time! Bye!